Hi guys, so today we're going to cover the thin lenses. So we're going to start with converging lenses and then we will talk about diverging lenses. So, and I still have the, the app here, simulation. I highly recommend that you play with it. It's a, it's a fantastic tool. So the converging lens, it's also called uh, convex lens. So it's a lens that will be physically thicker here at the center and thinner at the edge. And if this is the case, that means rays coming parallel, so far, far away, they will all converge at the same point. Those type of lenses you get from the dollar stores, for example, they are very cheap. Okay, you, I think, I think you are all familiar with them. Here are some examples here. So they're just the magnifying glasses that you can use. And you see these, those lenses are thicker at the center, thinner at the edge, physically. And, um, for example, if I, if I, so that will be a typical, magnifying glass or converging lens and it's um it's used for people to read when when they age for example the muscle here in the eye gets stiffer so we cannot adjust very well for uh, reading so you need to use those magnifying glasses and they are very cheap so here typically you have the sun Sun has rays coming parallel, so you get the ray to focus here at one point. That point here, so the distance between the lens and the screen here, it's what is called the focal length. What you get here on the paper, it's like a screen, it's, it's a paper, uh, you, you get an image of the sun. So that this is actually the image of the sun and all the energy here is focused at one point and of course you can burn you can burn the paper. So that's a converging lens. Now how do we get converging lens? For example if you take two prisms on top of each other you're gonna have the ray to the, the ray will refract as we talked about and they will uh, turn to refract but not at the same point. If you make the curvature the right way, so then parallel ray will focus at one single point. We call that the focal point. But it does not have to be this shape here. So if I go back to that simulation here, you see that here, that's also a converging lens because it's thicker at uh, the center, thinner at the edge. So ray that come parallel to each other, they tend to focus at one point here. Now if I take another shape here, like a raindrop, for example, or, or something spherical here, you see, same thing, it's thicker here at the center than it is there, so the light will tend to focus at one point. Now if you have the opposite, so if you have a lens that is thinner at the center and thicker at the edge, you get a diverging lens. It has to be concave somewhere, right? So it's it makes like a cave. So it's a concave lens, it's a diverging lens. So just to give you an idea, uh, let's see what my slide says. So a ray, so if you have a converging lens, a ray that comes parallel, okay, so from very, very far away, the ray will have to be refracted and go through the focal point on the other side. A ray that goes through the focal point on this side will have to come out parallel to the axis. So this is called the optic axis here. So these are parallels and the ray that will go through the center will not be refracted. It will keep going in a straight line. So I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the app, but you see here converging lines. You, you're going to have a bundle, okay, of rays. So it, you have a beam. 
but you only need three rays to to trace to make a ray diagram and then you can have your image on the other side so i will uh, i will uh, explain what i mean by that so let's look let's look down first at demos and then i will uh, go over uh, the simulation so this is a video done by the company Arbor Scientists uh, Scientific and they actually sell uh, materials for science. They, they are relatively uh, affordable. But I'm going to use that just for demo. So here you have four lenses. So you have and four high quality lenses. So you see you have two convex lenses, convex or converging, just a magnifying glass. If, if it's very thick, thicker it is, that means that the ray will refract the most. That means if you use it as a, if you use it, if you use it as a magnifying glass, it will, it will have more magnification. Okay, so thinner, it means if you use it as a magnifying glass, it means it's not going to be as big. So these are magnifying glass, actually, convex lens, thicker at the center, thinner at the edge. Now you see here that it makes like a cave. So these are concave lenses, concave lenses with different thickness here at the edge. And uh, they, they are diverging lenses. So the glasses I wear, for example, because I have uh, myopia, so I cannot see far, you see they are the type of lenses that are very expensive. And uh, you see how thick they are at the edge. That's how you know that they, they are strongly diverging uh, lenses. You know, they are very strong. And uh, these are concave. Because you see here, this is thinner relative to the edge. So this is thicker than here. So at the center, it's thinner than at the edge. So it's a concave, concave lens. So what they try to do is to hide how thick it is. So they have improved a lot in the designing the lenses. So four lenses. There are two convenient lens stands every rejected image, making it easy to set up, easy to make measurements, and making it space. space. So, okay, so what he has here in your storage cabinet is that we call that an object. So that will be the the object. That's going to be your lens, and that's going to be the screen. And what you get here is that, let me show you. Okay, so you have the lens here, you have the object, and here you have the image. The image here is called the real image. And I will show you another demo that I did uh, in class. You see that the image here, you have an F, and now here you see an F upside down. Okay, so the image is upside down. And in that case, it's bigger than the object, but it can be also smaller. If you use it as a magnifying glass, then you are not able to display anything on the screen because the image is virtual. So what we call a real image is an image that can be displayed on the screen. So now you see it's a real image, but now it's smaller. So it means if you take the ratio between the object, which is a big F, and the image here, a small F upside down, the ratio will be less than one. If you find the ratio between the size of the image and the size of the object. So that case is one half you can ratio. So now you can use you can use your lens as a magnifying glass, right? So it's going to see things bigger, and you can make a ray diagram. 
Okay, so I also did some demo for you. Let me find out. So I'm showing you the demo and then I'm going to show you the simulation and then I will do the math. Hi guys, so I'm going to do... So that's the magnifying glass I bought at the dollar store. So you see it's going to be thicker at the center and thinner on the edge. So it's usually used as a magnifying glass but you don't have to, you can project a real image on the screen here. The demo I did in class that you can easily do also at home. So here I have a magnifying glass that I got at the dollar stores. It's entire, and you can see the outside. Okay, you see the outside of the... So here I'm placing my converging lens here uh, in front of the screen. And behind that lens, you, I have my window, and then and behind the window, I have trees and buildings. So the light comes from very, very, very far away, relative to this distance here. So all the rays here come parallel to each other, and they're going to focus here at that uh, low, uh, focal distance. So the distance here, when I get a nice image, which is... Uh, with a good resolution and I can tell you know the building here and the tree all upside down so then now I know that the focal distance is the distance between the screen and the lens so if you have a magnifying glass you can try that at home okay you put your magnifying glass here uh, on the, the outside and the uh, next to a window and you should see the outside you know projected on the screen but upside down the distance between the screen and the lens, that's going to be the focal distance. Far away, you can see it upside down here on the screen. So the image is inverse. It's going to be real because it can be displayed on the screen. And what is interesting about it is that the distance between the screen and the lens, that's, that's going to be the focal length. So that's one way to find the focal lamp in a very, very fast and easy way. See, you can try to focus, you see the building upside down. So that means that parallel rays coming from far away are all going to converge at a single point. Okay, So every single point from far away is converging at a single point here at the focal, at the focal point. Converging lens. And now the object so, here is... So here I'm using it not to make a real image that you can project on the screen, but I'm using it as a magnifying glass, which is uh, what why these lenses are uh, sold. It's very cheap. So in that case, you see that the image... Is inside the focal lamp. Okay, so smaller, that distance here is smaller than the focal lamp. So that converts... So you see that the image that you see here is on the same side as the object. Okay, so the image is not real, it's going to be virtual. If I put a screen, so if I try to put a screen here or a piece of paper between the object and the lens, of course you are not going to see anything. You are able to see something because your eyes is an optical instrument. So when the image is on the same side as the object, the image is virtual. And you see that the image in that case is erect, so it's not upside down like a real image. A real image is upside down. Here a virtual image is erect, and in that case it's going to be larger. Lens is now able to magnify, see it's magnifying, so that means the image that you see is in the same same uh, size than the, the object, right? So it's a virtual image that your eye is able to see, and that image is upright, okay? It's not upside down. It's okay, guys, so here's another demo. So now I'm going to do the same demo as the person the, uh, who, who was doing the demonstration for Arbor Scientific. 
I'm gonna have my lens here. I'm gonna use it to project a real image on the screen, but it's gonna be the opposite, right? It's gonna be upside down. I did in class, so I still have my converging lens. Here you have the object, which is uh, just a, a arrow, and it's pointing to in this direction, right? So for me, it's to the left. And now you have the screen here. Yeah, there is nothing on the screen, just uh, light for my computer. But now I'm going to place the lens in between the computer. And that's an experiment that you can do to convince yourself. I highly recommend that you play with that. So you have your computer, you type on Google, big arrow. Okay, so that's going to be your object. You have your lens and you have your screen. Try to change the distance between the lens and your computer or the computer. You, you move it farther away or closer and try to see how it's going to influence the image. So that way, when you get to answer conceptual questions, you really have it in your gut, right? So it's easier to understand when you do yourself the demo, when you do yourself, uh, when you do the demo yourself. And um, this, these demos are easy to do because this is not even one dollar. So you see the arrow here has been flipped. So lens, when you have the screen, image, and you see that now the arrow is pointing to the height, right? I mean the opposite. So for me here it was pointing in this direction and now the arrow here is pointing in the opposite direction. So what do I get? I get an uh, image which is real because it can be displayed on the screen and it's inverted and it's smaller, right? So I could move, for example, if I, if I move my computer, if I move the computer closer, um, you see the arrow here is getting it's getting larger, okay? And if I move it really, really close, now I don't see anything because you have a virtual image. Very close, I cannot, cannot get anything here. You see, it's still real, inverted, and in that case, bigger, because the distance between the object and the lens is in between two times the focal length. So you see that I could also replace the, the lens, I could replace it with um, a water here inside that container and it will also uh, behave like a converging lens because it's not perfect but I still get the image here on my, of uh, the arrow and it's pointing to the opposite direction that I have here on my screen which is the object. So here. I get an image which is smaller, inverted, but it's real. Another thing that you can do which is fun, and another thing that uh, is fun to do, you see this arrow here is pointing to the left. And that's an experiment that was given by uh, a student of mine. His name is Alex. So here it's pointing in this direction. Now if you look through the, the glass here, which is filled with water, it's pointing in the opposite direction, right? So that means you get an image inverted, an inverted image, and this is behaving like a converging lens. Okay, so now I hope that you get a more uh, sense how it works. So let's go to the app. So again, so that's going to be your converging lens. It's thicker here at the center than it is at the edges. That's going to be your object here. And here you have an image. That image here is real. Okay, you see that the rays actually touches. They touch, the, each ray touch here and get to the image. So that's how we know it's a real image. Now this distance here is called the focal length. So you have focal length here, the focal length here. And I told you the way you find the low focal length, you can uh, have a piece of paper and you have the image of the sun, for example, or of a tree very far away. And when you get to see that image on the piece of paper, the distance between here and there 
that's going to be the focal distance. That's one way to measure the focal distance. So that will be the focal distance here. So this is called the focal point one, and that's going to be the focal point two. Okay, so you have F1 here and F2 uh, here. Now, you can, uh, so the, the rule goes like this. If, so first of all, here you have only three rays, but of course you can have many rays, right? So some of it will go through the lens to form the image. Some of it will go in the opposite direction. So if I want to make a image here brighter, I can increase the size of the lens, right? So for example, if you have a bigger telescope, okay, it's going to be good for the resolution, but it's also good for the brightness of the image. If I have a small lens here, I cannot catch that many rays. So you still have the image, but it's going to be dim. So of course, best is to have a big, 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 uh, the size, a large, large converging lens. So the, the brightness depends on the area of the lens. Okay. So if you multiply the size by two, the radius by two, you're going to get four times more photon, right? The, the image will be four times, four times more brighter. You can change the index of refraction. So it depends on the material here. If you increase the index of refraction, you see that it's going to be, you decrease the focal distance. So the ray will be able to be refracted more, of course. Here we have 1.5. Okay, you can change the curvature here. So you have a curvature, so the radius, as you increase the radius, you get a thinner lens. As you, as you decrease the radius, you're going to get a thicker lens. So thicker lens means it's going to be magnifying more if you use it as a magnifying glass. That means the ray will be refracted more. Okay? So the... Light comes from everywhere, of course. Here we just uh, use the, the tip of the pencil, but you have light coming from here that will make an image here. You have rays coming from there that will make an image here. So anyway, if... So to, to make a, a drawing, for example, if you are asked to, to, to do the drawing, to find the image here where it's located just by tracing ray. So this is called ray diagram. You use three rays. Okay. You can only use, you can also use two rays. The ray that goes parallel to the optic axis. So this is called the optic axis here. The ray that goes parallel, like it's coming from far away. It's going to go through the focal lamp, uh, focal, focal point. The ray that go through the center of the lens will not be deflected. The ray that goes through the focal point will be parallel. Okay. Because there is a symmetry, symmetry between this one and that one. That's how you can trace your image. So that image here is real and upside down. So here is the rule. So here you have F1 and F2. And here, about here you have, so let's find out. So the, the focal length is about, is about, is about, you have to measure here about 65. So if you take twice that distance, so twice, twice this distance here, so boom. About here. So if you take that twice this distance here, that will be twice the focal length. If, if an object is anywhere between infinity and twice the focal length, you're going to get an image which is upside down and smaller. Now, if I come closer, when you have the same side, that means that 
distance here between the lens and the object is equal to twice the focal length. Okay, so this is a focal length. This is twice the focal length. When that happens, the, the, image, the images here have the same size. And of course, this uh, lecture cannot explain, go into all the details. So that's why you have to read your textbook. So I recommend Johnson and Cottenham for those who are taking the MCAT. So anyway, if, uh, if you are at a distance, so that's going to be the distance for the object, which is equals to twice the distance, the, the focal length, then the size here will be exactly the same, except it's upside down and it's, it is real. So as you get closer and closer and closer to the focal uh, point here, you get the image which is real, upside down, but now it's larger, it's, it's bigger than the, the object. Okay, so the image here is bigger than the object. I, show you, I already show you that with the demo. When, when you get to the focal point, poof, the image disappear. Okay, so when you see that the image disappear, as you bring your lens uh, closer to the object, you know that distance will be equal to the focal distance. And then it reappears, but it reappears in the same side, on the same side as the object. So that's a real, real, uh, uh, sorry, it's a virtual image. Because you see here, the ray do not reach the, the image and you can only see it because you are located here and your eyes, your eyes uh, behave like lenses so you are able to have an image on your retina. But if you have a screen here, you don't see it. So it's a virtual image. So that's how magnifying glass work, okay? If you put a piece of paper here, if you try to put a screen here, you're not going to see anything. So it's a, it's a, it's a virtual image. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be magnified and it's erect. Okay. It's not upside down anymore. You see. So that's how magnifying, magnifying glass uh, work. So uh, how, just to uh, give you some uh, examples. So here, converging lenses. If you are asked to do a ray diagram, you only need three rays. Ray number one, it's the one that is parallel to the axis here, optic axis, and it will go through that focal point here. The ray that goes through the center will not be uh, changing direction. It's going to be a straight line. The ray that goes through the focal point here, it will come out parallel. And, and you get your image here, which is real, and it's upside down. That comes from the book, a uh, very good book also, which is a, bit, a little bit of math, but... Um, also conceptual, it's called Physics of Everyday uh, Phenomena. It's also from uh, Macro Hill, so uh, it's a very good book as well. Now you see that... So here is a typical uh, example as well. Now the object is between one focal uh, distance and two times the focal distance. So between, if you, if you have the object between those two points here, you're going to get an image which is still real, okay, because it's on what's that side here and you see the rays goes to it, it's reaching it. It's still going to be upside down, but now it's enlarged, okay, it's going to be uh, bigger, taller than your object. So you want to use that, for example, in the old projector. We, we, we used to have a projector and you will put a slide in the projector and the image will be projected here on the screen 
and it will be a bigger image. Okay, even even the modern projector works the same way. And of course, here your object has to be upside down so that you can see uh, the real image uh, in 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 the true tr true direction, right? So erect here because this one is upside down. But you see, the image here is real, it's enlarged, and it can be seen on the screen. So that's how you typically use for those lenses. You can make a real image which is smaller, or a real image which is larger. <coughs> and again, you can really get a sense like a geometrical optics can be challenging if you don't do the experiment. You have to play with lenses to really understand how they work. So here I can take a star for example, but if if the star you are looking for a telescope is very far, far, far away, the star is going to be here at the focal point here. All the ray will be almost parallel to each other. If it's a star, it's going to be parallel to each other. And the image will be at the focal point, right? But it will be tiny. Now, if I come closer, you see it's getting bigger here. And the image here is moving farther away, but it's getting bigger. It's still upside down, although for a star it doesn't matter. And it's real because it can be displayed on a screen. Okay. <coughs> so for example, if you if you take a magnified glass and the star is the sun, you can see the image of the sun of your on your piece of paper, it's going to be tiny, but it's real because you can see the sun here. They use this uh, method to look at the sunspot, for example, if you have a huge, huge lens. So now I am at a distance here from the lens of uh, smaller than twice the focal distance. So now it's being enlarged, it's upside down, it's real. Once I go very close, so inside the focal uh, distance, now it's acting like a magnifying glass. The distance here between the image and the lens, we're going to say it's going to be negative. Okay, so if both the image and the, the, the object are on the same side, the distance here is going to be negative. The image is virtual. It's not upside down, so it's erect, virtual, and enlarged. Okay? So that's how lenses work. <laughs> so here we're going to use uh, two lenses. We can use two lenses to make a telescope. You have the objective here and this is called the eyepiece and it's connected inside the tube. So the job of the eyepiece here is to bring the star, the object that is very 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 far away close to you. So all the rays here going through that lens here, it's going to be brought close to uh, you at the focal at the focal point. So that's going to be the focal point of that lens. And that lens here is film. Usually they use a film lens. <laughs> if, you, if you want to use a refractive telescope. So its job is to bring why, why it has to be filmed, so it, that way it has a large focal uh, uh, distance, so it's going to bring the object close to your eye, which is behind the eyepiece. But the image, again, is real, okay? Just that it's going to be tiny. Okay, so again, you do the same thing when you have a magnifying glass, under, under the cell, you have the image of the cell on your piece of paper and it's going to be real because you can see it, it's going to be tiny and it's going to be upside down but you don't 
Encore une fois, là, il a dit top side up, because you said it has no top, no bottom. But it's, it's going to be upside down, it's very small. And then you have another converging lens for a refractive telescope. This is thicker, usually you have a thicker lens with a smaller focal distance. So this image here becomes the object for that lens here. Okay, so now it's the new object for this lens. And because it's inside the focal distance, so <laughs> now you're going to get a virtual image. Okay, so this one will be like a magnifying glass. The image will be virtual, but it will be bigger. And it will, it will not be inverted. Okay, so... With a refractive telescope, you have two lenses. This lens brings the faraway object close to you. And this lens you, is used as a magnifying glass and it makes it bigger. But bigger sometimes <laughs> doesn't really help because if you have a fuzzy object which is small, you make it bigger, it will be a big fuzzy object. So what matters with a telescope is the resolution, and the resolution depends on diffraction. That's another topic. So here we want, uh, it's a red diagram, so it's uh, showing you how to trace uh, the rays when you have a virtual image. So it's acting like a magnifying glass, a ray, for example, that goes parallel, it's going to go through the focal point here. Again, a ray that goes uh, through the center is going to be not be deflected. And the ray that seems to come from that focal point here will come out parallel. And then you find the intersection of the rays, and that's going to be your virtual image. That distance here is called the distance of the object. That distance here is the distance of the image. And in that case, that distance here is negative. So here I get a virtual image, erect. <coughs> and uh, you cannot see it on the screen. The only way you can see it is that if you use your eye as optical instrument, or if you put another lens here. So here is another example that's from the microscope. So you also have like two lenses. So this is the objective here, the eyepiece there. And um, so the object here is very close to the focal point. So maybe you want to pause the video and think of what kind type of image should you get? Is it virtual or real? So because it's not inside the focal distance here, you expect a real image upside down and larger. That's the idea. It's going to be larger because the distance here between the lens and the object is smaller than twice the focal distance. So you're going to have an image which is larger. It's going to be upside down and it's real. And then you have another lens here. That image is going to be inside the focal length of the second lens. So now you're going to get an enlarged image. So it's going to be enlarged, but it's going to be virtual. So this lens, it's like for the microscope, um, a telescope, it's like the telescope. This lens is like just like a magnifying glass. So you make your image here, which was real, much larger. That image here is virtual. So you have two lenses here. So <clears throat> here again, it's the um, magnifying glass. You use the converging lens as a magnifying glass. You have the object here inside the focal um, distance. So the distance here is smaller than the focal distance. And you see that the ray 
do not reach the image. They seem to come from that image, but they don't reach it. And you cannot display that image on, on the screen. So this is called a virtual image. And of course, if you want to trace, uh, find the position here of the, of the image, you only need two rays. One ray parallel will go through the focal point here, and one ray that goes through the center will not be refracted. So you see that the image here is beyond, I mean, it's like uh, on, on the same side as the object. So object and image are on the same side. That's why it's called virtual image. And in that case, we say that the distance here between the lens and the image is negative. So this is the thin lens equation. That's going to be the distance between the lens and the object. That's the distance between the lens and the image. That's the focal distance. If you have a virtual image, then d sub i is going to be negative. That's going to be the uh, magnification. That means this, the ratio between the size of the image to the size of the object. If that number is negative, it means that the image is reversed. If it's positive, it means it's upright. If it's smaller than one, that means the, the, the size is, the size of the image is smaller than the size of the object. Is, if it's larger than one, then it's enlarged. You have an enlarged uh, image. So that's how it works. And the focal distance here is always positive for a converging lens. We call that also a positive lens. Okay, so let's try to do a problem. This problem here comes from um, the book um, Physics by Johnson and Kuntnell. That's where I get the slides from. So you can pause the video and try to do it. Let's see if I can. Uh, Okay. Let's go here. I'm not sure what's doing here. So uh, it's standing, so you, you can read along. So that means that's going to be your D sub O. That's the height of the object. That's your focal length. And they want to find D sub I to begin with. And then they want to find out if it's real or virtual. So let's start with that. So you have your optic axis here and the lens, you're going to do something like this. That will be your positive lens. Those here means that it's converging. So it's a converging lens. It has a very small focal length here. So that's a focal point here, the primary, secondary. And then you have um, you have you have um, an object here, really, really far away, relative to the uh, the focal focal distance. So it's like almost infinity, right? So if you have a ray, for example, coming parallel here, you know it's going to be going through the focal point there. And if you have a ray going, and that's going to be hard to do, straight line here going through the center here. I'm going to have it here. So here you have your image on the field because it's a, it's a, it's a camera. So you have the film here, so it's like your screen. And you already see that the image is going to be real since the ray can reach it. 
and you can print on, on the film here. So it's a real image. So then you, are, you can apply the equation. So the distance to the object here is 2.50. That's here, that's what you try to find. And the focal length here is 0 0.05. So you can, you can pause the video and try to do it. So you can apply what we call the fin lens equation. So you're going to have 1 over 0 0.05 equals 1 over 2.5 plus 1 over uh, Um, my unknown, that's going to be the unknown here. Okay, so you have 1 over unknown equals 1 over 2.5 plus 1 over 0 0.05. So if you take your uh, calculator, you can easily find reciprocal, so it's 0 0.05 to the minus 1. Okay, uh, did I do a mistake? Uh, it should be a minus here. That was a minus because it goes on the other side, so that was a minus. Um, okay, so one over that minus 2.5, take the reciprocal, okay, so that's going to be 19.6. Over one, so d sub i equals one over nineteen point six, which is about zero point zero five one meters, so or one two five point one centimeters. So it means. The distance here, the focal length, it's already 0 0.05, and that distance here to the image is 0 0.051, so it's very close. It makes sense because the distance here is very large, so it's almost like infinity. So if it was at infinity, it's at basically at infinity, so you expect to have the image here at the focal, at the focal point, okay, at, um, Focal distance. Okay, so the image is going to be very small. So let's see. Image over object equals minus uh, image distance to the image. So that's going to be 0 0.051 over 2.5. Right? By one, and you get about um, that divided by 2.5, and you get 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Okay, so that means H prime, and there was a minus, so it's going to be minus 0 0.02 times 1.7. Okay, so that's the size of your image. So you go back and you multiply by uh, 1.7 and you get something very small, minus 0 0.035, 35 meters, so 3.5 centimeters. It makes sense because if it's a camera, you expect the image to be very small, right? Hello, just my Okay, so so here you have the solution, except there is a mistake here. It should not be two point five, it should be one point seven. Okay, one more problem that I found in uh, in the book, University Physics, 
Okay, so it's, it has two lenses. So it's given to you that you have two lenses. Okay, one, one lens has a focal length of eight centimeters. The other lens has a focal length of six centimeters, if I remember. And then what else is given to you? They are 36 centimeters apart, those two lenses on the same axis. And then you have an image and no, you have a first object. So the object is at a distance from the first lens. So from this lens, it's at the distance 12 centimeters. And uh, the size is 8 centimeters. So the, the question is find, uh, is to find uh, the final image, the position of the final image and, and the height of the final image. Okay. So you're going to have an optical axis here. You're going to have two lengths. Okay. So the first one you have eight centimeters, so that's going to be eight here for the focal uh, lens. It's going to be in centimeters. The other one has a little bit smaller focal length, six centimeters here, so that's going to be six centimeters here. Okay, and the object and those those are at thirty-six centimeters apart. And then it says the object is at the distance of, so this is 8, uh, 12. So this is 8, so the object should be somewhere here. So that's the object. I'm going to make a arrow here. So that's your object. The object has a distance here, 12 centimeters. So it's, uh, it's not inside the focal length. So I'm going to get a real image and it's going to be uh, upside down between the length here. Okay, so you can even trace. So it should have like, a, so this is eight, uh, two times, two times eight is 16. So this is 16. So that means you expect to have an enlarged, enlarged real image. Okay, so I, I didn't do the things on scale. So if I do the thing on scale, that should be, this is eight, this is eight. So the, somewhere here, 12, let's say this is, um, this is 12 in between, sorry. This is eight, this is eight, so twice the focal length, and the object is somewhere here. So I'm gonna get something enlarged and upside down. So let's check with the, the equation. I'm gonna have one over 12, so that's gonna be 12. One over 12 plus one over the position of this image here equals 1 over 8, okay? And uh, what do I get? I get, uh, if you solve that for d sub i, I get um, 24. Okay, so we have 36 here, we have 24 there. So therefore, if this is 24 and this is 6, so what is left here, it's going to be um, 6, right? So between here and there, I'm going to have 6, 6 centimeters, okay? Because 24 and 6 is 36, so uh, 24 and 6 is 30, plus 6 is 36, okay? So now I'm going to find the image because of that second lens. And you see that distance here between here and there, it's going to be 12. So I should have kept the blue here, but that distance here is 12. 
So because that image, or that uh, object for this lens, that object is at the distance twice the focal length here, it's not on scale, twice the focal length, so I expect a image here on the other side of the same size, okay? So if you are at a distance exactly twice the focal length, you're going to get an image exactly the same size, and it's going to be uh, upright. So here, if I had a distance here between the lens and the object, about equals to twice the focal uh, distance, I'm going, I'm going to get something upside down, but about the same size. So that's what I expect here. So let's do the math. For this second lens here, so I'm going to have 1 over uh, 1 over the object here, so that's going to be 12, 1 over 12, plus 1 over the position of the image, the final image, equals 1 over 6. So you're going to get, if you solve for that, you're going to get 12 centimeters. So here, I'm going to have the image same size, okay, same size, it's going to be real. And you can do the ray tracing if you want, so you can do, uh, if something is parallel, it's going to go through the focal point here. If it's going through the center, it's not going to be deflected or refracted, okay? So that's going to be your final image. So the final image is real, and it's upright relative to the object to begin with. Now, this, the question was, the size here is 8 centimeters. So what's going to be the size there? So first of all, you see that size here is the same as this one, right? Because uh, for the reason I have explained, but you can show that. It's going to be minus, so that's going to be the image is at 12, the object is at 12, so it's going to be minus 1. So this one relative to that one, it's going to be the same size, but it's going to be inverted. And then this one relative to that one, okay, so you have... Um, so so we, we talk about this one. Okay, so now we want to find the size of this one relative to that one. So it's going to be um, this size here. It's going to be the how far it is here. It's going to be 24 divided by 12 with a minus. So it's going to be minus 2. So the final size here, the final size here, it's going to be h prime prime relative to the first one. It's going to be minus 1 times minus 2. It's going to be 2. Okay, so the size, the final size, it's going to be 2 times 8, which is uh, 16 centimeters. So if you start with 8 here, you're going to end up with an enlarged image, which is uh, erect, okay, so it's not reversed, and it's enlarged, and it's real, and it's not virtual, okay? So that's going to be here, h prime over h sub 0, okay? So I think that was an interesting problem here. Hopefully I was clear enough, but you go from here then to go to the image for the relative to the first lens and then you find the image relative to the second lens. So that's going to be the final answer. Okay. Okay, so 